Yo, what's up, everybody? It has been two years and two months since we have been inside an international airport, but here we are today at Auckland International Airport getting ready to fly over to Turkey from New Zealand. Super excited, and if you guys are planning your trips and you're wondering how long do you actually need before you go into the airport, uh, it took us about an hour to check in our luggage, and then it took us about 15, 20 minutes to go through security, so definitely a little bit more extra time than it usually would take. And then so far, as we're filming, this, a lot of stores are closed but there are a couple of eateries open and a few shops here and there. Going to Turkey is super exciting but it is an incredibly long travel time for us. It's going to be about 26 hours in total so about 11 from Auckland to Singapore. We've got about a five hour transit and then another just under 11 hours before we head over from Singapore to Istanbul. Never done so much <laughs> air travel for a trip before so we're gonna see how we go but we'll um, take you along with the journey with us. Yes, so. we're gonna make tons of videos from Turkey so we hope you're subscribed so that you can check them out weekly with us. It's time to go check into our gate I think. Let's do it. See you soon. There it is guys, our plane right over there. down at Changi Airport and we're on our way to look for the, uh, what is it called? The Transit Hotel. The Transit Hotel, yeah. <laughs> Mum and Dad have booked us to stay at the Transit Hotel just to make our five hour layover a little bit more Thanks, comfortable. Thanks Mum and Dad. Thanks Mum and Dad. So um, it's a pretty massive airport so we're going to try and find that now. Yeah. It's in Terminal 3 somewhere. <laughs> Finally found this place. <laughs> found our hotel room and Yin is just chilling out in here. Hey guys, <laughs> so glad that we've got this little stop over where Peter and I can just chill out for a couple of hours. We can take a shower, brush our teeth and all that. We also get a meal included with this room, which is pretty handy. Thank you so much, mum and dad. Yes, a huge thank you, mum and dad. Got a nice bed too, so we can take a little bit of a nap before we've got to make our final leg over to Istanbul, which is gonna be another like 11 hours, I think it was, of just under. I wanna take a look at that menu. Twenty something hours later, and we have arrived in Istanbul. Hey, bud. Hey, <laughs> we finally made it. We're going to get our luggages now, and then we need to pick up some SIM cards so that we can get connected again. It's going to be really expensive, I know, getting it from the airport, but it's just for convenience' sake. And then we're going to go find our Airbnb. Sounds like a plan. In our bag. Yeah, we just come out of arrivals and took our left and you get to this area where all the like mobile sim stores are and we did a little bit of pre-reading and we found that Turkcell has the best coverage apparently. Um, but also one thing to note, if you are getting your SIM, if you do head into the city, it's, a, it's up to like 50% cheaper. We paid 550 Turkish Liras for ours and the SIM lasts three months, but the data on the SIM lasts for one month and there are multiple different price options. Yeah. But, it's supposed to be roughly quite similar though with the different stores. Yeah, but we've um, you know got it all sorted. We had to wait 10 minutes to actually activate everything and then we've got like an extra SIM pin as well which we've uh, put in and everything's working fine now so we can now go and look for a way to get to our Airbnb. an Uber to our Airbnb <laughs> so let's get on taxi. out. We'll see. <laughs> Ooh. 
We are certainly not in Auckland anymore. Everything looks so totally different and I can't wait to explore. We've just arrived at our Airbnb. Yeah, it took us maybe about 40 minutes from the airport, I think. Yeah, and about just... 45 minutes. And we're waiting for our Airbnb host, Seske, now to come down and meet us. Just met up with our host, Seske, who's super lovely. And she showed us all around the room, which now I am going to show you guys around. So come, follow me. Let me take you through our accommodation because Yen and I are staying here for the next three weeks. We were looking for a place that kind of has a lot of the conveniences that we're going to need for a longer term stay, yeah. like this washing machine right over here. Yes. That's really handy. <laughs> it's uh, sometimes a bit of a mission finding, um, what do you call it, one of the Laundromat. laundromats when you're on the road. And so that's really handy that that's there. There's also a bunch of utensils and stuff inside the kitchen itself to make cooking easy if we were going to cook but we probably won't because we'll be eating out most of the time. Here is the living room which is a real nice space. The dining table where we'll probably be using as a computer desk but then you've got the couch and TV all around here to chill out at too. I think we'll spend most of our time here probably. Most likely and take you along, take you through a little hallway here and then we've got a bathroom on our right and then we've got the bedroom right here behind me. Yeah, this is going to be a good little spot to <laughs> chill out for the next wee while and um, if you guys are looking at booking this place as well, it costs Yen and I are roughly about $70 per night, um, which is pretty decent value here in Istanbul. Had a look around at a lot of different places, but right now we are feeling pretty tired. We're probably going to kick back and relax and just chill out for a bit first and then onto some exploration later. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Good night, Dan. So yesterday we had a pretty chilled out day. We rested up, went and got ourselves some food from nearby, and then we had a very early night's sleep. I slept at 6 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, and I think I ended up sleeping around 9 p.m. But anyways, this morning we are going to go out and try find ourselves a traditional Turkish breakfast. Sezge, our host, recommended a place nearby, but the name has changed, so we think we know the spot and we're going to try out that place. And um, yeah, I forgot to mention yesterday, that our Airbnb is situated in Besiktas, yeah, which is the European side of Istanbul, since the um, city does cross both over the European and Asian continents, which is really cool. We've made it to Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I think we found our breakfast place. Yes, I think it's this one. It kind of looks like the pictures, but the name is different to what Google Maps says. So yeah, we are very much looking forward to this because we've only heard amazing things about the Turkish breakfast. amazing does this look? This actually looks insane. Like, <laughs> I was expecting a pretty big breakfast, but this is just such a huge spread. It yeah. blew my expectation. So we've got here some Turkish donuts. They've been fried. Let's go in with this one first. This is tomato and pepper. I didn't quite catch the name of it though, but I'll put on a generous amount and let's have a <laughs> taste. Oh. If only you guys could taste that. That is insanely fresh and delicious. Oh, the peppers are so nice. They have a hint of spice, but like not overwhelming at all. But this bread has been fried to perfection. It's so chewy and crispy. Disease. <laughs> that is my Turkish word for the day. It means delicious. Olives just taste better when they're eaten from this part of the world. It's super fresh, has a lovely fragrance to it. Let me try one of this first. I have no idea what this is. Fairy cheese. <laughs> that is so interesting. A really subtle flavor, but that's definitely cheese. I just don't know what kind of cheese, but that is delicious. This is going to be a whole experience for us. <laughs> but now let's get for the sun. Um, this creamy one that I got on the bread. Mm. Oh man, 
That is so good. You're making me hungry. <laughs> I can definitely taste all the fermentation process through that, but along with it, it's quite creamy too. So I have been eyeing up this dish right here, which I completely forgot what the nice guy said it was, but I remember hearing curd mixed with something else. I'm gonna try some of that uh, hairy cheese later because that is very intriguing. I really wanted to start with this one. Mm. Oh my goodness, that is delicious. It's like salty and I could smell it before I ate it and it has almost like a scent of spiciness to it. It's not spicy at all though, but really delicious. I really like that. We've also got some fried eggs as you can see here and this one which looks really interesting to us too which is cranberry mixed with wild blackberries. Mixed, yeah, wild blackberries. It's a cold drink. Look at that color. Wow. <laughs> mm, yum. Reminds me a bit of um, Ribena if anyone's had that before. <laughs> which I love so it's really good. delicious meal and really nice people at that restaurant too. Right now though we're not going to venture out too far but we are trying to find a bus stop to get ourselves over to the Domabache Palace. So we're just walking around and it is pretty good because we need to work off all that food. <laughs> So we made it onto the bus, but unfortunately we didn't have a metro car, we didn't realize, we thought we could still pay cash, but we couldn't on this particular ride anyway. Thankfully a really nice guy lent us his card and then we just gave him some cash and said thank you. So we are on the way now and it should take us maybe about 20-ish minutes I think. Yeah, just getting some help, sorting out the simple card now. It's been a day of first day, first with the Turkish breakfast and then catching a bus in Turkey for the very first time. I gotta do a massive thank you to all the nice Turkish people who we've met along the way helping us yes. from the metro station, on the bus, to the breakfast place. We would not have been able to get here to get our first view of the Bosphorus if it wasn't for all of you. So the Bosphorus is the strait that separates the European side from the eastern side and I'm pretty sure that's the mosque over there. There should be a clock tower as well as then the final palace as well. So pretty excited to check all of it out. Let's head on over. We just passed through a security check and they took our main camera as well as our microphone because unfortunately that's not allowed inside the palace area but it's okay we're filming on Yin's phone right now apparently that's all right <laughs> yeah. so we're about to get our tickets and i think they're 300 lira per person we have also picked up an audio guide which is right before the entrance they just require something like a deposit, so your driver's license or your passport, and then you pick it up from the gift shop afterwards when you're done. So the audio guide, we chose English, of course, and you can just scan it when you're ready to listen to the commentary. Something useful to know is that when you're inside the actual palace, there is no taking any photos or videos, even with your mobile phone. It's written here and the security people will tell you that too. So we're really sorry we couldn't show you inside that palace. But it was amazing. It was magnificent. It was so lavish and grand. The chandeliers are incredible. There's one almost right towards the end, which just looks like it weighs a ton. And they said something about how it takes, it took 67 crates, I think it was. Yeah, yeah to and ship two months to put it all back together. Yeah, just amazing. It is very lavish inside. <laughs> Interestingly, Domobace Palace saw the end of the Ottoman era as well as the beginning of the modern era. It was originally commissioned by Sultan Abdul Mesid and finished construction in 1856. 
It housed a few of the sultans during the Ottoman era, as well as uh, Mustafa Ataturk. We just came through the harem, which we saw in an important room, which is the room where Mustafa Ataturk actually passed away. That's why all the clocks in the palace are set to 9.05 a.m. This is a spot that we've been looking for. I was a bit sad we weren't gonna see it at first because there was a lot of construction on the similar kind of areas earlier on in the palace. But yeah, this archway that looks over at the Bosphorus, it's a sweet area because you also got uh, the palace just sitting right over here looking majestic as it is. And you've got a nice garden area too, so very nice. We've just exited the palace and picked up our stuff before leaving. So you go just back at the start where the gift shop is on the outside to return the audio commentary and then back at security to pick up our camera and microphone. It's been an awesome day at first with the breakfast and yeah. this magnificent palace. So it's definitely not something that us Kiwis are used to seeing. No, it's not. We hope you guys enjoyed following along with us. And if you haven't, please remember to subscribe. We're going to be posting our videos again weekly of our adventures here in Turkey and don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it drop us a comment we'll catch you in the next video see you everybody bye